you're looking to dive into topics on how to live a happier, healthier, more fit, and long lifespan, then you've come to the right podcast. Living the dream with me, Coach Damian Evans. Together, we will explore the topics on all things health, fitness, and wellness. Together, we will be lifelong learners on this journey to living the ultimate dream. What up, Dream Team? Coach D here coming at you from beautiful, sunny San Diego, and welcome back to the Living the Dream podcast, where we climb up this hump day hill to explore total wellness in order to reach for your goals and live your dream life. And today we're going to be talking about how to change your life one tiny step at a time and why change is so hard. Whether you're looking to improve your fitness, whether you're looking to get healthier or just make small but meaningful changes to your everyday life, today's episode is going to show you how small actions can lead to big results. If you're like most people, there is a gap between the person that you are today and the person that you dream to be. You might have big goals like working out regularly, eating healthier, or starting that project that you've been putting off, but it often feels like to achieve those goals, you need to become a different person, someone with more discipline, someone with better consistency and more willpower. But here's the thing, change is hard and that's not your fault. Today, we're going to break down why that is. And more importantly, how can you make change easier? Let's start by imagining our brain as a jungle. Our brain is a dense jungle. When you decide to do something new, like starting a workout routine, it's like moving through an actual jungle. Can you imagine? Overgrown trees, branches, just stuff everywhere. It's hard to get through this thing and it costs a ton of energy. And your brain does not like wasting energy. To save effort, your brain creates pathways. You create neurological connections, neurons that fire together, wire together. Your brain doesn't like wasting energy. To save effort, your brain creates pathways. Each time you repeat an action, you create a tiny little trail in this jungle. Over time, you repeat this action. You keep traveling down this trail. That trail turns into a road, and eventually that road turns into a highway. This is why we tend to do what we've always done. We tend to do what we've always done because those pathways are already there and they're easy to follow. Sometimes these pathways were created when we were in just our first few years of life. When you've spent years following the same routines, those highways, they are well established, which make changing these highways and not going down those highways automatically even harder. But don't worry, you can still create new pathways. You don't have to always go down the pathway that you've always gone down. Let's talk about the difference between routines, your daily routines, your lifestyle routines, and your habits. Routines are a sequence of actions that you consciously plan. They are a domino that sets off another domino that when you do them in order, it goes as you consciously planned. It's like setting your alarm for 6.30 a.m. Once that alarm goes off, you wake up and drink water, you go to the bathroom, you put your clothes on, you get ready for work, whatever your process, your routine is, it started by setting your alarm at 6.30 you know what comes next because that routine is a sequence that you've practiced and that you've consciously planned. These are executed by what I like to call your wise planner, the part of your brain that's slow, it's strategic, and it's aware of your long-term goals. Habits, on the other hand, these are actions that you do without thinking about them. 
Habits are actions that you do without thinking about them, like unlocking your phone and reaching right for the social media app without even knowing what you're doing. You've done it before. I would bet on it. Or reaching for a snack when you're bored. You're at home. You're done with work. The night is winding down. Dinner's over. You're watching your favorite show. You randomly walk over to the refrigerator or the cupboard and you open it up. And look, even though you just did it five minutes ago, you know what's in there. It's a habit. They're handled by what I like to call the impulsive toddler. You have the wise planner and then you have the impulsive toddler in your brain. This toddler responds to triggers or cues around you, like seeing your workout gear or being in a certain place at a certain time that triggers something else to happen. The toddler doesn't care about the future. It just wants to take the easiest, most familiar path to something that feels good, to something that feels good towards the pleasure end of the pleasure pain spectrum. Understanding these two systems, routines and habits, in your brain is the key to making change easier. Your wise planner can help you set new routines. And the impulsive toddler can help turn those routines into habits over time. You can utilize both systems to help you get to where you want to go rather than letting those systems do what they do automatically. The power of triggers to change your life, you need to use triggers to your advantage. We have triggers in our life that trigger us to do things that we don't want to do, things that, that go against our goals. But we can leverage these, these powerful triggers in our lives and we can make them help us get towards our goals. A trigger is just a cue that signals the start of a habit. The trigger is a cue that signals the start of whatever habit we have or want to start. For example, if you want to start working out every morning, you could set a trigger like setting your workout clothes out where they are visible and the first thing that you see in the morning. They're the first thing. They're stacked up in a pile nicely. You have your socks right by your shoes. It's almost impossible for you not to see those and be like, okay, I'll just start putting these on. How can that be my trigger? or having a designated place and time for exercise. So for those that work out in the morning, instead of driving to work first, we drive to our gym, we get our workout in and we have our workout, we have our work clothes ready right afterwards and we go straight to work. Or or for at the end of the day, we finish our day and instead of going home to get on the couch to rest before we go work out, we go straight to the gym. It's having a designated space and time for whatever we want to do. I want you to think about one area in your life where you're feeling stuck right now. What's one small manageable change that you could make today to start building momentum? Where do you feel stuck right now? Is it fitness, nutrition? Is it stress management? sleep? Is it relationships, work? Where are you feeling stuck right now? What's one small manageable change you could make today to start building momentum? Now, once you have that change, it's not about just doing that change. It's about how can I set up a trigger to remind myself to take that step each day? And I found that if I stack it with an already existing habit, routine, or trigger, it's just that much more uh, effective at me getting what I need to do. Here's an example. I, when I first moved down to San Diego, I gave myself a goal of hitting the sunset on the beach at least four nights a week. That was like my dream. 75% of the reason why I moved down to San Diego was for the sunshine and the sunsets. So how can I make that into my day? Well, it was really hard because at first I had to find the right beach. A lot of the beaches down here is a, 
uh, excuse my language, a shit show to park and find and, and, and navigate all the busyness of what San Diego beaches have. But then I found this amazing spot where I could park and because it required a 30 minute walk to get to the beach, nobody ever was there. So not only did I get movement in, I got my beach in, I had less stress. Once I had this routine down, I was also able to, I started rucking. I added a backpack to the equation. So now not only am I getting my 30 minutes of walking and my beach, I'm getting a, a style of resistance training along with aerobic training that I find super valuable for myself and for others that I train. Then I added on meditation. I was able to find a spot where I was out of the way of people. I was able to kind of be by myself, calmly, you know, find a spot where I could sit without being underneath the Del Mar cliffs, you know, that collapse all the time. I found the perfect spot and I stacked on meditation with it. I stacked on eventually breath work with it. I, then I stacked on being able to do cold plunging with it. If I would have said, I need to do all of these things when I first started looking for a place to just sunset, I would have been so overwhelmed. There's no way I would have got it all in. It probably would have taken hours. And instead I use this one hour time block that I give myself for something that's really important to me. And I was able to fit all of these tiny things in one by one. Once I had established habits and set the trigger for each habit, I didn't even have to think about it. So walking led to sitting and meditating. The end of my meditation, that meditation bell signaled that I take off my shirt, my shoes, and I jump in the ocean. Like these are all triggers that usually would have taken a lot more time, but I've consolidated everything into a routine, one domino into the next, that I get so much done in this time period that I never would have gotten done. How can you do that in your day? The important thing is to repeat the action in the same context. You're trying to go through the jungle on the same path. You're trying to sled down the hill in the snow in the same path so that you can create a better neurological connection, an easier pathway that is more traveled, that is more efficient, that your body can and brain and mind want to go down easiest. So if you're doing 10 squats every morning, Make sure you do them in the same spot at the same time after doing the same thing. Over time, your impulsive toddler will start to recognize the trigger and initiate the action automatically. I got to say that again. Over time, your impulsive toddler will, will start to recognize the trigger and initiate the action automatically instead of your impulsive toddler taking you to the cupboard or the fridge. You're, you can utilize the power of the impulsive toddler to help you do what you want to do. It takes time. It takes effort. It takes consistency and practice, but you can do it. You can leverage the power. Start small. The biggest mistake that people make when they're doing this is they, when they're trying to change their lives, they aim too high, too fast, too big. To create lasting change, it's been proven you have to start small. If you think it's too small, it's probably perfect. If it's laughably small, it's probably perfect. If your goal is to work out more, do not try to run five miles every single morning at 5 a.m. in the morning when you wake up at 8 in the morning usually. Don't do that from day one. Instead, break it down into something manageable literally like doing 10 squats. Imagine you decided to just walk for 10 minutes every day. It doesn't seem like much, right? But over the course of 365 days, over the course of a year, that adds up to an additional 60 hours of walking that you normally wouldn't have done. Small actions compound over time, and that's where the magic happens. One tiny step every single day might not feel like much, but those steps build the path to long-term success. Small changes are easier for your brain to accept. They are much more likely to become habits if they're small. 
the smaller the step, the more likely it is that you are going to stick with it over time. And the more likely that over the months and the years, these small changes can lead to big improvements in your life. And then eventually you can start to add duration or intensity or complexity. Another thing you have to make sure you do is you have to make sure to make it pleasurable. One way to make it easier to stick to whatever new habits you're trying to do is by making them enjoyable. That seems so, <laughs> so simple. So like, duh, right? Make it pleasurable. This doesn't mean rewarding yourself after the habit. Working out, if I work out, I gonna reward myself with a smoothie. That, that's not the way to do this. You have to make the habit itself more fun. For example, you could only listen to your favorite podcast while working out. You can't listen to your favorite show until you're doing the workout. Or you combine a chore with something that you really enjoy. Like maybe you're doing your taxes while waiting for a game to load. So if you are a video gamer, maybe you have this task that is like really unenjoyable and you do that during your downtimes while maybe you're currently dead and you're waiting for the next game to finish and you're waiting for, you have your habit stacked with that. Um, for me, it's mobility. Mobility has, was never really my favorite thing to do. I, I felt like I had to take this big block of time and do mobility. And it's like, when am I going to fit this in? Okay. Well, if I'm going to watch TV, why would I just sit there and watch TV? Why wouldn't I just get it, my body into a position on the floor with a bunch of pillows and blankets and, and get comfortable down there. And, and then when my body tells me it's time to move, I shift and I move positions and I get into another mobility move. Why wouldn't I stack it with something that, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be sitting here anyway. I might as well kill two birds with one stone. When the habit feels good, your impulsive toddler will be more likely to repeat it and consistency over time. I'm going to say it until I'm dead. Here's the thing. Starting is the easy part. When you're motivated, when you have inspiration, it's the easy part. The first week or two, you're going to be riding off of these emotions. But as time goes on, it gets harder to keep up the new habit. Check out the stats on people who make a new year's resolution. The momentum starts so strong and it dies off as fast as you possibly could imagine. And it's only getting worse in, in this technology driven society that we have when it's so easy to go the other way and to just maintain status quo and continue doing what we've always done. It gets harder to keep up that new habit. This is normal, but the more consistent you are, the easier it will become. And the smaller the task is, the more likely it is you're going to be consistent. Eventually the new habit will go from being a routine to being automatic a highway in your brain, a highway through the jungle of your brain. I always think about Jerry Seinfeld. He, he was famous about his don't break the chain method. He decided that he would write at least one joke every single day, no matter what. One joke. Every time he did it, he would mark an X on his calendar. His goal was to never break the chain of X's. And guess what? Sometimes he broke the chain of X's, but then he looked at his best streak and he tried to beat his best streak. He started a new one and now he had a goal to shoot for. All right, 25 days, I'm going for 26 now. That's the simple system that helped him become one of the most successful comedians of all time. One joke a day doesn't sound like much, does it? But over time, it turns into an entire career's worth of work. Yeah, research shows that it can take anywhere between 15 and 250 days to fully establish a new habit. That's for sure. It all depends on the behavior. It all depends on your stress levels, the challenge of that habit in your life, other environmental factors. The key is to keep going even when it gets tough. You will achieve this habit in the time that it's going to take. Don't worry about the 15 days, the 250 days. The, the goal is, is to figure out a way for you to implement this into your life and make it the routine and stack it with the things that you already do well. 
And eventually you're going to have this whole 24 hour period that is that is trained to be automatic how you want it to be automatic. And then when you have events that are a little bit different than your goals, you can kind of go off of your track and it's going to be harder for you to do that because you have all of these habits and routines that you've had set. So you can literally change your life to if it's right now, you have a hard time just making one habit. You can change your life to now you have a day full of habits and it's hard for you to go away from them. You can literally turn it around 180. Change is a direction. It's not a destination. So remember, the truth is there are no silver bullets when it comes to change. But the science of habits, man, this shows us that change is possible. No matter how old or how young you are, you're never too old. Tiny Habits by BJ Fogg. You have Atomic Habits by James Clear. There are just so many, so many books and and pieces of content that you can consume that will tell you the same thing. Even if you only make a few small improvements, you're still going in the right direction. I want you to imagine yourself six months from now. You've taken one tiny step every day. You've built momentum. You're feeling stronger. You're feeling healthier. You're more in control of your life. It wasn't about making one giant leap. It was about showing up every day for yourself. That's the power of small changes. One small step at a time. You're building the life that you've always wanted. Change is not a destination. It is a direction. It's not about perfection. It's about progress. Every step that you take gets you closer to the person you want to be. And when you fall off, you don't fall off for long. When you hit an obstacle, when you break the streak, you start a new streak as soon as possible. That day, that that next action, don't write the day off. Don't wait until the first. Don't wait until the right time and motivation comes. As soon as you break that streak... As soon as something bad happens, write it off and say, okay, that happened. I didn't act in accordance with my goals, my long-term goals. That's fine. That's going to happen. This is a one-off that is a small percentage of the overall time in my life. I am going to, my next opportunity, change and make a habit and, and take action towards the way that I want to be, the very next action. Thanks for tuning in today. And if you found value in this episode, don't forget to share it with someone who's also on a journey to self-improvement or that you know has struggled with habits and lifestyle and routines. Keep taking those tiny steps forward. And remember, you're not just changing a habit. You're changing your entire life. And that's it, my friends. Thank you so much for joining me on this Wellness Wednesday episode of the Live in the Dream podcast. Please share the knowledge that you gain with your friends and family and hold each other accountable. If you enjoy this content, it helps a ton if you could post a screenshot of this episode on your social media stories and include one takeaway that you learned. Tag me at livingthedream underscore podcast or at coach Damien underscore SD and let us know how this episode benefited you. Let us know what we missed. Let us know what we got wrong. Tell us how you have used what you heard in this episode to help you or if you have anything that you'd like to add, we want to know. Message us with any suggestions or tips that would help your Living the Dream team, topics that we can discuss on future episodes. I'll be right here with you, working on making us stronger, happier, and healthier humans. Until next time, friends, keep living the dream.